Good morning, church. How are we? Good. Happy Good Friday. Is that what you say on Good Friday? Kind of sounds weird, hey? Happy Good Friday. We'll just run with it, okay? Happy Good Friday. <laughs> uh, it's a real pleasure, a real honor to be here with you this morning. And, you know, Ben didn't say it this morning, but last week he said, you know, Jesus first entrusted the Easter message to women. And I guess Pastor Russell decided if it was good enough for Jesus, it'd be good enough for us today. <laughs> Asked me to come and speak here at Centerpoint. Um, and over at Tagum, they have our amazing women's leader, Donna Lee, preaching over there this morning. I'm absolutely believing that here and at Tagum, it's going to be a great morning, isn't it? It's going to be good. Well, for anyone in the room who doesn't know me, my name is Tamara, which you know, you've probably guessed by now from the introduction. Um, but yeah, I'm Tamara. Ben and I, we run the young adults here at Centre Point Church, and we've been on the leadership team, the staff team here for just over seven years. So yeah, we love Centre Point Church. We love the people here. And I might be a little biased, but I'm pretty sure this is the friendliest church you're going to find on the north side. Am I right, Centre Point? You're with me on that? Yeah. Yeah. So if you are new here this morning, I just want to extend my welcome to you. I'm really glad that you've joined us today, whether you're in the room or whether you're online. And, you know, if you're a long-standing centre pointian, I don't know, you know, if you've been here a while, glad you've joined us as well. Uh, as I said, a real honour to be asked this morning, and I'm believing that I have a message for you that is going to bring you hope. It's going to challenge you a little bit. And I just believe that there is a good news message here this morning. Whether you're here for the first time or you've been here a long time, there is a good news message for you this morning. Are you ready for it? Yeah, yeah well, Pastor Russ, he asked, me to, um, he asked me to speak a few weeks back, maybe four or five weeks ago, which was great, because it just gave me my time to do a bit of preparation, a bit of research for today. So I want to tell you this morning, guys, I have been reading and reading. I have been watching. I have been listening. And finally, I found the best content, the best information that social media has to offer. That's right, people. Today's message is brought to you by Instagram. Are you feeling good about that today? <laughs> I am joking, but I did get my inspiration for today's message from a post that I saw on Instagram a few weeks ago. But for those who are feeling a bit worried, I do promise that since that time, I have been doing my legitimate and proper research, okay? I promise. But a few weeks ago, I saw a series of posts on Instagram that just instantly captured my attention and convicted me to my core, right? I looked at these images and it was kind of like a punch in the gut. Do you ever get that? Like when you just see something or you hear something and you're like, oh, it just hits you right there. And you're like, I knew I needed to see that. I needed to hear that. And that's what it was like as I saw these images on social media. And I plan on sharing them with you today and hopefully punching you all in the gut as well. <laughs> Are you up for that? In a good way, of course, okay? In the conviction, in the revelation way, I do assure you there is going to be no physical abuse happening here today, okay? But I want to share these images with you and I want to share a message with you, as I said, that I believe is going to bring you hope and going to challenge you this morning. So why don't we pray and we'll get into it, yeah? Father God, we just thank you for your love today. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the cross, especially on this Good Friday. We thank you for Jesus on the cross. Father, this morning we just open our hearts, we open our minds, God, and we just Allow you, Father, to speak to us in a way that only you can, Father. Lord, that would, you know, hit us in the stomach, God. Give us your conviction. Give us your revelation this morning, Father. And everyone who agrees said, amen. Amen. Well, for those who, like me, sometimes find themselves scrolling through the pages of Instagram, shall we say the social media adept, the skilled, those who have lost many hours too and now only have a seven second attention span. For you this morning, I have created a reel with today's core message. And for those of you in the room who are like, what is a reel? <laughs> it is basically just a short video clip that you will find on Instagram. So why don't you turn your eyes to the screen for today's core message. Yeah. 
What did you think? Punch in the gut worthy? <laughs> These are the images that I saw on social media that caught my attention. And they caught my attention because within these images, right, we see the controversy of our world. We see some issues that have divided humanity. And we see people who we maybe couldn't even imagine being a part of our Christian faith. And I was just convicted as I watched Jesus wash the feet of all of them, of the digitally distracted, to the homeless, to the regular everyday nurses and police officers, right? To Kanye West and Donald Trump, Jesus washed the feet of all of them through those images. And as I replayed them over and over again, what I saw was a message that God so loves the world. All of it. In all its variations, in all of its opinions, God so loves the world, right? And I was moved by that. But then I had this inner voice ask me, you know, God so loves the world. Do I? Oh, <laughs> there it was, <laughs> right there. <laughs> God so loves the world. Do I? Or do I just love those who agree with me, who are like me? Do I so love the world or am I too busy to love the world? God so loves the world. Do I? Do you? I want to speak to two groups of people in the room this morning. The first group of people that I want to speak to is those of you that are sitting there who didn't know that God so loves you. You know, maybe you've never heard that before. Maybe you have heard that before, but just completely rejected it or didn't believe it. I want to tell you this morning that God so loves the world, right? Don't get me wrong. God does not love sin, but he loves people. He so loves people. And that includes you this morning. That includes you this morning. I want to tell you this morning that Jesus is there with a stool waiting for you. Will you take a seat? The other group of people that I want to speak to this morning are those who are already walking out their faith journey with God. And I want to ask you that same question that convicted me in my core. God so loves the world. Do you? Do you? Because in those images, right, I see issues, controversy, things that have completely divided us and segregated us, right? The vax or the no vax, the mandates or the no mandates. I've seen that very issue segregate our community over the last 12 months. I've seen friendships split up over. I've seen families break up over. I've seen marriages split because of that very issue. But guess what? It's not the only polarizing issue that we have in our world, is it? So I say to you today, you know, how are we loving those that disagree with us? You know, within those images, we've seen people who have at times probably felt shunned or even victimized by the church, right? Like the pride community, maybe even the homeless community, maybe even those who are struggling with addiction, maybe even those who are struggling with their mental health. So I ask you this morning, how are we loving those who are potentially, and it's a big potentially, right? potentially in opposition to our faith. I'm not saying that people who struggle, not every person who struggles with those things is opposing our faith, but even if they're not, even if they love Jesus and they're struggling, how are we loving them? How are we loving them? We saw images then that reflect some of the circumstances of our world that have shocked us, like the Ukrainian crisis. How did you feel when you saw the mum with the Ukrainian flag sitting on the stool and Jesus washing her feet. Did you think absolutely Jesus is there for her? And then how did you feel when you then saw the Russian soldier sitting on the seat? How did you feel about that? You know, as believers, we say we love as Jesus loved, or at least we should. <laughs> 
right? The Bible tells us in John 13, 34, I give you a new commandment, love one another. Just as I have loved you, you must love one another. So my question is to all of us today, do we? (laughs) Do we really? Or is it just too hard to wash some people's feet? Can we not really be bothered? Are we too busy, too distracted, too proud? Maybe you are excellent at loving the world. That's great. But I want to ask all of us today to think about who you need to see sitting on that stool. Right, that last image that was up there, it said, you already know who you need to see on that seat. Is it you? Do you need to see yourself on that seat? Is there someone in your world whose feet you need to wash and you need to pull up a stool for them? That's what I want you to contemplate today as we, as we chat. Who do you need to see on that seat? These images that we've been looking at on the screen, they're based on scripture in John. It's just before Passover and it's Jesus' last meal with his disciples. I want to read it to you. John 13, 1 to 17. It says, It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said, not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, He put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. If you've been in church a little while, you're probably familiar with that passage of Scripture, right? The foot washing scene. It's kind of a big deal, yeah? Which is why it's so interesting to me that we don't see it in any of the other Gospels. We only see it in the book of John. None of the other Gospels even mention it. I mean, I imagine this would have been like a pretty standout moment for them, something that was so unusual, unheard of even, for a master to wash his disciples' feet. You know, some of the reading that I did told me that it was a normal custom for the lowest slave to wash the feet of those that would attend a banquet or a dinner. But for whatever reason, it didn't happen for this particular meal. And none of the disciples were willing to take that place. (laughs) To take that place, they would have had to admit a lower status, if you like. And we know from the other Gospels that just before this, the disciples are all arguing over who is the greatest. So none of them wanted to take this place and wash each other's feet. So what a message it would have sent to his disciples when Jesus, their master, they're all here fighting over who's the greatest. And then their master takes this position (laughs) and washes their feet What a standout moment. So why didn't any of the other Gospels mention it? Well, we know that each of the Gospels are written to show a different side of Jesus. 
And the book of John is written to show the divinity of Jesus, meaning Jesus is God. So it makes sense that some scholars say that what Jesus did was a visual parable for a divine washing, a natural washing to show his supernatural washing. And if we look at the parallels, we've got an, um, an image for it. Thank you. Right? It said, Jesus rose from supper, a place of rest and comfort. Jesus rose from his throne in heaven, a place of rest and comfort. Jesus laid aside his garments, taking off his covering. He laid aside his glory, taking off his heavenly covering. Jesus took a towel and girded himself, ready to work. Jesus took the form of a servant and came ready to work. Jesus poured water in a basin, ready to clean. He, Jesus poured out his blood to cleanse us from the guilt and penalty of sin. And Jesus sat down again after washing their feet. And it says in the Bible that Jesus sat down at the right hand of God the Father after cleansing us. So while he may have only washed 12 disciples' feet in that scripture that we read, Jesus has cleansed us all through what he did on the cross. In Ephesians 1, 7, it says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. To be washed or cleansed by Jesus, that's what it means, right? To receive redemption, to receive forgiveness for our sins. The Bible says sin separated us, right? We were unclean with sin, but the blood of Jesus wipes that away and makes us clean this morning and able to have access to God again, able to have access to eternal life. And who is that available to? In John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Who has access to this cleansing this morning, right? The world, the whoever believes in him can have this redemption, this cleansing through the blood that was shed on the cross. And this is exactly what we see as Jesus washes each one of the disciples' feet. If we think about those images that I showed you at the start, right? Obviously, Jesus didn't wash the police officers or, or Donald Trump's feet within those scriptures. But what made the artist or what gave the artist the impression that Jesus would? I think it's because within this passage of scripture, we see Jesus wash the feet of Peter all the way to Judas, right? Peter was the A plus student. Peter preached the good news. He cast out demons in Jesus' name, and Jesus said he still needs his feet washed. Peter literally saw Jesus like transfigured up on a mountain with Elijah and Moses. Like, what an incredible spiritual experience. And apparently, he still needed his feet washed, right? Peter, the guy who walked on water, what faith he had. And apparently, he still needed his feet washed. Like when I look at Peter, I think, this guy? <laughs> Are you sure, Jesus, this guy needs his feet washed? I mean, surely he's close enough to Jesus. Surely he's performed enough miracles. Surely he has enough faith and ticks enough boxes that he doesn't need his feet cleaned. But what did Jesus say to him? Unless I clean you, unless I, oh, if I do not wash you, you have no part with me. I wonder if sometimes we think we're good enough to not need our feet cleaned. You know, maybe you've thought, I'm a pretty good person. I make good choices. You know, you've, you've come along to church today, either in person or online. Maybe you think, you know, I, I go to church. Maybe you even lead a life group. Maybe you've even had amazing spiritual experiences. Maybe you've healed sick people, seen breakthrough. Well, guess what? <laughs> the requirement for clean feet or to enter the kingdom of heaven is not being a good person. It's not even having amazing spiritual experiences. The Bible tells us that we have all fallen short, even the Peters, even the Peters. And the only way is through the way the truth, the life, through the cleansing of Jesus. If he does not wash us, we have no part with him. Peter had to accept this from Jesus. He had to accept the humble service of Jesus, that the king 
would wash his feet, but he also needed to accept that he needed it. He had to receive it. And he is a pattern for us now here in 2022. I can confidently say if Peter needs it, I need it. (laughs) So to the Peters in the room, I ask you this morning, will you take a seat and allow Jesus to clean you? For others in the room, maybe you're feeling like, yeah, that's well and good for them, but you have no idea the kind of person I am. You have no idea what I've done. I know my feet aren't clean. I know my whole body is not clean. And there's no way I could be clean. You know, maybe you were dragged to church this morning. It is Easter, right? (laughs) Get a few extra people come in. Maybe you were dragged to church this morning. You know, perhaps you've made a lot of mistakes. Perhaps you've hurt some people. Perhaps you've done things that you just cannot take back. Perhaps you're thinking, I could not be wiped clean. I can't be redeemed from my sin, forgiven for what I've done. But look at who else was included in the foot washing. Or more specifically, who was not left out. And that's Judas. Judas, who sold out Jesus, handed him over to be crucified. Could you imagine one of your closest friends selling you out like that? Right, Judas, he was close to Jesus. He was one of the 12. He'd been with Jesus on the journey. He'd seen the miracles and still, for a bit of money, completely sold him out, sent him off to be tortured and crucified. Now, we know that Jesus willingly went to the cross to fulfill Scripture and make a way for us. But still, one of your nearest and dearest selling you out like that. I don't know about you, but I'd struggle to include that person That's little Memmy. She's our little one. (laughs) I'd struggle to include Judas. I'd struggle to wash his feet. If I was washing Judas' feet, (laughs) I'd be thinking, can you believe this guy? I know what you've been up to with that money bag. I know you've been scheming with my enemies. I know that even today, you are going to betray all the trust that I put in you. But the Bible says Jesus knew. He knew this about Judas and still he did not exclude him. If Jesus did not leave out Judas, you can know that you were not left out either. If Jesus saw Judas sin and washed him, he can see your sin and wash you too. This is why it is a good Friday, hey? Because God so loves the world, all of it. You know, whether you are a Peter or a Judas right now, we all need cleansing. And you are included, right? Jesus knows. He knows our hearts. He knows our sin. And he loves us enough that he would cleanse us. This is great news. But can I tell you this morning, you still have a part to play in that. We still need to recognize our need for the cleansing and accept the humble service of Jesus. I'm going to replay that reel for you in just a moment. And as you look at these images, I want you to think about what do you see? Do you see yourself on that seat? Do you see a world that you need to love? Is there someone in particular in your world that you need to put on that seat. Can we just play that reel once more and just contemplate as you watch? first group of people that I was speaking to this morning. 
I want to tell you again that God so loves you. Jesus is there with the stool waiting if you would just take a seat. Today, you are going to have the opportunity to receive the love of God through Jesus. You're going to have an opportunity to accept the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross and be cleansed from your sin. The Bible tells us that to receive this, all we need to do is believe in our heart, confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. That means a laying down of your own lordship. You're no longer the Lord of your life, but you're confessing that Jesus is the Lord and you are going to live for him and how he says to live. The Bible says that when you do this, you are saved. This is why we celebrate Good Friday. The blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross, it cleanses us, it saves us, and allows us to have eternal life. It's the best decision you could ever make with your life. And at the end of the service, we are going to have a moment to pray with you. So if that's you, we will definitely give you the opportunity to pray at the end of the service. But this is just step one. (laughs) We know that to continue to follow Jesus and live a life after God is a journey. And many of us have been on that journey for some time. So for the second group of people in the room that I was speaking to today, our core passage in John that we read, it said, if you have had a bath, you need only your feet washed. And then he tells us how we're going to get our feet washed. He says, now that I have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. We can't live out a life for God on our own. We need ongoing foot washing and we need each other. We need each other to do that. And we need to allow each other to do that. So what is foot washing? Other than the very literal meaning of washing someone's feet, right? It's serving and it's pointing people back to Jesus, the one who cleanses us. It was the lowest servant who would traditionally have this job of feet washing. So it was a service that allowed people to sit at the table with dignity One of the commentaries that I read said, anything that we do for each other that washes away the grime of the world and dust of defeat and discouragement is foot washing. So when we see someone struggling, when we see the homeless on the street, when we see those struggling with addiction, when we see those struggling with mental health battles, when we just see those who are not easy to love, not easy to be around, when we see a brother or sister in Christ struggling with whatever sin it is in their life, Let's not judge, you know, assume things about them, like, oh, I know how they got there. Let's not gossip, like, oh, did you hear about bangers? (laughs) Did you hear about bangers? (laughs) Right, let's not judge. Let's not gossip. But let's allow them to sit at the table with dignity. Let's grab a bucket, wash their feet, and point them back to Jesus. When someone disagrees with us or disagrees with what the Bible says for that matter, right? Let's not slander. Let's not argue. Let's grab a bucket, wash some feet and point them to Jesus. Let's be intentional foot washers here at Centerpoint. Let's be encouragers, people who lift others up, people who bring each other back to the truth of God's word when they've believed a lie. Let's allow others to sit at the table with dignity by continually grabbing the bucket, washing off that stain, covering them, pointing them back to Jesus, the one who cleanses us. God so loves the world. Will you? Will you pull up the stool and wash some feet? Are you with me on this this morning, church? Yeah. Yeah. I hope you've received this message today, that God so loves the world. Now let's go love them too, yeah? Yeah. In a moment, we're going to share communion together. I just want to invite the band back up. And if you haven't received... Um, your communion emblems this morning. If you just want to raise your hand and some of our ushers will come around and make sure you've got that ready this morning. This morning, we've been discussing and acknowledging the cleansing that's available to us 
But this cleansing could not have happened without Jesus going to the cross where His blood was poured out for us. You know, and at this dinner that we've been reading about where Jesus washed the disciples' feet, this is also where Jesus started this practice of communion. It's something that we do on a regular basis just to remember and honour the cross, the blood being poured out to cleanse us. In Luke 22, 19 to 20, it says, And he took the bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. In a moment, the band is going to play a special Easter item for us. And as they play, as they sing, I just want you to take that moment to remember the body that was broken for you, the blood that was poured out for you. Contemplate the cross, the cleansing, what it means for you this morning. Let's honour the cross. Be grateful for the cross this morning. As they sing and as they play, take your time to have that moment. And then when you're ready, please feel welcome to eat and drink the emblems this morning.